speak to Tina Burrett, who joins me now live from Tokyo. She's a professor of political science at Temple University. Many thanks for joining us, Tina. Let's start with the economy. Now, the reality is that so far, Abenomics has failed to achieve what was promised back in 2012. What are the tools that are left, essentially, in the toolbox? Well, I think the plan now is probably for another large fiscal stimulus. We're looking probably at approximately uh, $100 billion. And Prime Minister Abe mentioned so soon after the election that we should expect a new stimulus. And that's led to a rise on the Nikkei today. But the government have already introduced a number of fiscal stimuli in the past. And that hasn't led to any significant changes in Japan's economic fortunes. So it looks like we're actually going to be seeing more of the same, and probably with the same consequences. And uh, looking to the political side, what exactly is this going to mean in terms of Japan's position globally? Are we going to see any changes immediately? I think initially probably no significant changes. And in terms of Japan's international profile, having a prime minister who's been in office for more than three years now has been something significant and, and positive. You know, Japan changed prime minister every year in the six years preceding Shinzo Abe coming to power in 2012. So that stability, I think, makes Japan a more reliable international partner. In terms of Japan's ambitions to, or Prime Minister Abe's ambitions to change Japan's security legislation and to potentially amend the constitution, now that could give Japan a higher profile when it comes to engaging in military uh, endeavors overseas. But we're a long way off seeing Japan actually passing the legislation and referendum that it needs to in order to make that a reality. And of course, it's been a very controversial issue, this issue of him uh, having more military assertion within his own country. Will he eventually get the support of the people? I think it's very difficult to say. I mean, one thing that the referendum in my home country, the UK, a few weeks ago shows us is that the outcomes of referenda can be very unpredictable. And Mr. Abe would have to get a referendum uh, of the people to support uh, any changes to the constitution. At the moment, that looks very difficult because 68% of Japanese people say that they would vote to stick with the existing constitution as it is. He also would have to convince his coalition partners to support an amendment. And that party is actually based around pacifist um, principles. So it would be quite difficult for him even to get the numbers, I think, in Parliament. So. Nothing is impossible, and Brexit teaches us that, but I think it would be quite difficult. And there are a number of um, stumbling blocks in the way for Mr. Abe achieving that ambition. OK, Tina, good to speak to you. Tina Burrett there in Tokyo, Professor of Political Science at Temple University.